All right, let's look at this one. What if we have a variable in our denominator? Well, we have to treat that as a prime number. So if I want to find my LCD, well, this I assume is a prime number. This is a prime number. So they have unique factors in each of them. Well, when that happens, we just multiply them together. 3 times x is 3x. So what I need to do is have denominators that have 3x. So what do I have to do to x? To make it 3x, I have to multiply it by 3. 3 over 3. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 3 times 15 is 45. Now, to make this 3 a 3x, I have to give it an x, a factor of x. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And even though this is a variable, we're still multiplying by 1. x over x, any number over itself is 1. So 7 times x is 7x. And 3 times x is that 3x we were looking for. But these are not like terms. I can't add 47 and 7x because I don't know what x is. So this is a case because it does have a variable where I just write them over the common denominator because both of these are over 3x. So I can write it as such. 45 plus 7x are both over 3x. And that's as far as I can go. Don't ever think that you can cancel these because you cannot. You can never cancel from a single term. It has to be a factor. All right, let's look at this example. What, what if we have the variable in the numerator? Well, that's actually easier than having variables in the denominator. So I'm going to assess this and look. Well, 4 and 8, I recognize 8 to be a multiple of 4. So this means my LCD is 8. I've already found my LCD to be 8. So what do I have to do to this 4 to make it an 8? If we look here, we have that same denominator. What do I have to do to this? I have to give it a factor of 2, because 2 times 4 is 8. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 2 times y is 2y. And now, just like the previous example, well, these are not like terms, but they have a like denominator. So I can write them both over that like denominator, 2y minus 7. And there we have. That's our simplified form. We can't go any further. All right, let's look at two application problems. Now, this one has to do with budget. Maybe um, you're, you have a pay check, and you've got to say, OK, I have bills to pay. I have expenses. I want to make sure that I'm going to meet my uh, entitlements at the end of the month. So if we look at this, it says your income is $920, 3 tenths goes to rent, and 13 twentieths goes for food. How much do you plan to spend on each? So it wants to know, what is 3 tenths of your income? What is 13 twentieths of your income? So after reading it and assessing it and seeing what we're given, I'm ready to say, well, this is actually multiplication. It wants me to find out what is 3 tenths of my income. Well, 3 tenths times 920. And we've worked with multiplication in previous uh, videos. We also want to know what 13 twentieths of our income is. So 13 twentieths of means multiply 920. So now I can think of this as being over 1. And I can reduce. Here's where I can reduce, because these are all factors. There's only multiplication, no sum or differences. So I can reduce. I know that 10 and 920 have that factor of 10. 10 times 92 would be 920. So I can reduce that. And now I can multiply 3 times 92, which is going to give me 186 over 1, because this reduced to 1 times 1 is just 1. Any number divided by 1 is what it is. Oh, actually, this is 276. We all make math errors. Don't let it frustrate you. 276. 276 what? Well, income is measured in dollars, so that's our units. I'm going to spend $276. That 3 tenths was for rent. Well, that's some pretty cheap rent. But hey, if you find a deal, go with it. 
I'm going to do the same thing here. We have 920 over 20, if we think of it this way, 920 over 1. I can reduce. And I say, well, I can reduce that factor of 10. And I also know that 92 is an even number, so I can reduce by that factor of 2. So let's see, 2 goes into that 9 uh, 8 times with the remainder of 1. 2 goes into that 12. Oh, excuse me, 2 goes into the 9 4 times with the remainder of 1. And 2 goes into 12 6 times. So we get 46. Now I have to multiply 13 times 46. Being that they're both over 1, my denominator is 1, so I don't have to worry about it. And maybe we want to multiply these larger numbers by expanded form, or maybe we want to do it uh, vertically. So I'm going to say 46 times 13. 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus the 1 is 13. And then we're in the tens place, so I'm going to have my placeholder. 1 times 6 is 6. 1 times 4 is 4. And now I'm going to add my partial products. Remember partial products? And if I add those, I get 8. And 6 and 3 is 9. 4 and 1 is 5. And our units are dollars. Well, this 598, what does it apply to? Well, $598 of our income is to be spent on food. So we found the fractions of the income that apply to either rent, $276, or food, $598. All right, so let's look at the next one here. It says, what is the sum if the quotient of 6 sevenths and 4 elevenths is added to negative 3 fourteenths? Well, if we read it again, I know I'm going to find a sum. And it says, if the quotient, well, the quotient says there's going to be some division. So I have to do that division before I do addition or subtraction. That's order of operations. And it says the quotient of 6 sevenths and 4 elevenths. OK, so I'm going to divide 6 sevenths by 4 elevenths. And then find that sum when I add it, adding and sum are the same term, to negative 3 fourteenths. And maybe I put parentheses around it to uh, separate my signs. Now, order of operations says we have to do division first. So in order to divide fractions, hopefully we recall from the previous video that we multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor, 6 sevenths times 11 fourths. And I'll just write the rest of the problem here. And now I can do a little bit of reducing this. We'll reduce that 3 over 2. They had that common factor of 2. And now I can multiply 3 times 11 is 33. And I'll write it over here. 33 over 7 times 2 is 14. And then we want to add a negative 3 14. So well, if we recall, adding a negative is the same as subtraction. So we're going to subtract 3 14. Well, we look and we see, hey, it's our lucky day because we have the same denominator. So I can just do the subtraction of the numerators. 33 minus 3 is 30 over that common denominator of 14. And now I say, hey, I can reduce here. 30 and 14 have a common factor of 2. So if I take that out, half of 30 is 15, and half of 14 is 7. So we have 15. Sevenths. That is the sum of the quotient of these two fractions when added to negative 3 fourteenths. So this has been section 2.7, part 2. Thank you for watching.